First is Twittering Birds Never Fly, The Clouds Gather. This is the animation adaptation of the popular manga Twittering Birds Never Fly. It focuses on the story of Yashiro, who is a yakuza slash gangster who is extremely promiscuous and his bodyguard Domeki. This is a darker story that does contain a lot of sensitive issues, so it's definitely not for everyone. I think it's a fantastic, beautiful, and yet sad story of watching this character trying to be happy and trying to get over trauma in his own way. He's also very used to locking away his emotions, but he's slowly trying to open up again. Trying and failing, getting hurt, but getting back up again. And honestly, it's a 10 out of 10 manga and the anime adaptation was almost perfect. I highly recommend watching this if you like a little bit more realness and chaos with your romance stories. Next is The Incredible Kintaro. So the main character's grandfather was the principal of a school and when he passed away he said that anyone who could win over Makoto would become the next principal. So Makoto gets the help of his best friend as a bodyguard and he's also very much in love with him. If you're looking for something to make you laugh at the stupidity of the show then this is perfect. If you want depth, character development and an actual plot then probably give it a miss. I don't even know if this was something I could enjoy laughing at. I was extremely confused with what was going on. Half naked guys running around smacking each other in the face with their private parts. I don't want to be mean. Um, I guess the character designs were really nice and the animation wasn't half bad, but that's probably all I got. Next is The Titan's Bride. Mizuki has just finished high school and then isekai into another world filled with titans. This is where he meets Caius, the king who asks Mizuki to be his bride and to stay in this world with him. This wasn't exactly bad, but it wasn't exactly good either. I'm trying my very best to stay unbiased because I have read the manga and I'm trying not to compare the two, but it really doesn't do it justice. The animation was just too short and therefore the story feeling rushed and incomplete was to be expected. If you're a fan of the manga and you just want to see what your favorite boys look like animated, then hell yeah, go ahead and watch it. But I would just personally stick to the manga and if you're looking to get into the series then definitely don't start off with the animation. Next is The Given Movie. This is a sequel from the hit anime series Given that focuses on a group of guys in a band. Most of you have probably already seen Given. This movie focuses on Akiko and his rocky relationship with Ugetsu but also a messy love triangle between the other band member Haruki. This was a great movie and a fantastic sequel to the series. It tied up all those loose ends with the side characters that was unfinished in the original series. The animation, music, characters, everything was done so beautifully and with as much care as the first series. I don't think this was as good though but that's just because Given was so mind-blowingly amazing that it was impossible to top it. But they did a really good job. All those emotions hit just as deep and they even managed to nail the pacing despite it only being a movie, which is really rare, so I was kind of happy with it. Even though I really wanted a series out of it, a movie was perfect. Next is The Stranger by the Beach. The main character Shun is an openly gay novelist who becomes friends with a boy he meets on the beach. As they spend more time together and grow closer, Mio suddenly has to leave. It's a coming out story, it's a story of discovery, and it's also a story about falling in love. If you want romance and a depiction of a realistic couple, oh my god, this is it. It's such a cute and touching, wholesome story of love and nothing more. It's simple and beautiful with the way the story is told and the art style and animation that flows so nicely. The whole thing just left me wanting more. I just wanted more time to get invested into these characters. Despite how amazing it was, it just wasn't long enough. For me, I was unable to really connect with these characters, but it was still satisfying enough. 
As a special little mention, I wanted to suggest Semantic Error. Semantic Error is a boys love manhwa which follows the story of Sang Woo, who is a very indifferent but hardworking character, and Jaeyoung, who is more carefree by nature. These two are like complete opposite of each other and end up making each other's life hell. So the animation special is basically just a teaser or a trailer for the series. While it stands out on its own, you don't have to read the manhwa, but I highly suggest you do. Watching this short animation just made me want to reread the whole thing again. It's so good. It's a classic case of enemies to lovers and it's a really unique story with such great characters. Whether you read the manhwa first or watch the animation first, it's definitely worth consuming both. And if you want to know where to read Semantic Error, you can do so on Manta Comics. Manta Comics is a great app for reading BL webtoons and other comics as well. It's a simple subscription-based platform, so no more annoying and pricey coins. If you want to read Semantic Error, just click the top link in the description below. Next is Happy Go Lucky Days. This plot is split up into three different stories shoved into one movie, but all stories revolve around falling in love, learning how to love, and also how to let go of love. I'm just going to tell you straight up so you can just skip to the next one. I don't know why this even has the tag of BL or Shonen I. Yes, it's a lovely story of all sexualities, hetero, lesbian, and also gay. I was super excited for something so diverse, but it was just disappointing. And also, the entire BL theme was just one guy confessing to his teacher, and then they completely dropped the story. It was a great idea, just poorly executed. The art style was super cute and soft with a very simple look, but the stories were so short and not full explored so you basically get nothing out of it. Next is Twittering Birds Never Fly Don't Stay Gold. This is a side story from Twittering Birds Never Fly The Clouds Gather and it focuses on Yashiro's friend and Dr. Kagiyama. Also the well-known thug Mad Dog whose actual name is Kuga. Surprisingly good and surprisingly short. I am so confused with the whole Twittering Birds Never Fly animation series. I heard it was going to be a trilogy of three movies and I thought this was the second movie but it's just an OVA and it's about the two side characters who aren't really relevant to the whole story. But look, I'm definitely not complaining. It was a happy surprise to get this short OVA and it was interesting. Especially if you love Kagiyama and Kuga together. I don't know how yet again they managed to pull off a decent story in such a short amount of time. It made sense, it worked well, it was hot and steamy and a really great adaptation. Next is I became a black girl so I banged my best friend. Shion and Rui are best friends. One day Shion gets drunk and when he wakes up, he's turned into a girl. He calls Rui over and as he doesn't recognize him, he starts flirting with him. This was silly, but it was actually funny and I kind of enjoyed watching it. The plot, while absurd, seemed viable and the art style and animation was great. Yeah, you're probably thinking the same thing I was before I started watching it. If the guy turns into a girl, then how is that BL? It's just regular hetero or possibly more fitting to be labeled gender bender or something. But Shion does change back to a male and his friend Rui actually starts to like him. They both start liking each other a lot despite whether Shion is male or female. It's actually really cute so I'm gonna allow it. It is BL. And last is Heaven's Official's Blessing. The main character is a beloved martial god known as the Crown Prince but he ascends from the heavenly realm as a pitiful scrap collecting god with no followers. He must then get by in the human world on his own. This is another really popular memoir that has been turned into an animation. Honestly, I love Chinese animation. It's always at a really high standard and very pretty to look at. This story, while it was fantastic and it had great characters, it's just missing a lot of that BL. You know, with all the Chinese censorship laws, if you're looking for a good show with hints of bromance undertones, then this is a great choice. But if you want full-on BL like Boys Love, then nah. Personally, I like the memoir a lot better, but that's just my personal opinion. So that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!